Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Burning Rare Podcast. I'm Jake Scarborough, joined by my co-hosts, Kyler Boggs, Fidel Fabian, and Tyler McIntosh. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Well, uh, quite a bit to talk about. More on the NASCAR side of things, unlike last episode where it was mostly open wheel related. Uh, to kick things off, at least, we have uh, Phoenix for NASCAR last week. Um, I don't know. Your guys' takes on the races that took place? Kyler? Um, I mean, I watched a little bit of the Xfinity race. I didn't watch any of the cup race because I was at work. But, um, you know, based on Xfinity, I mean, I thought it was all right. You know, it was just, you know, a regular Xfinity race. But <clears throat> the cup side of things, uh, it seems that, that not many people are a fan of the quote unquote short track package because it's difficult to overtake and stuff like that, which, uh, you know, provides not really good racing and stuff like that. But then again, I didn't really watch much of the phoenix race because you know i was at work and stuff so um based on highlights and everything it looked like it was a normal race from my point of view so probably six out of ten on both races to be honest yeah Yeah, i gotta agree with kyler right here phoenix kind of falls in line with that same category with richmond and new hampshire as more of a driver's track than overall good short track race even with the old car, with that package, Phoenix was still a pretty dull race every time they had to go back there. And now with this past weekend, there are rumors that for next year's championship weekend, it's going to be back at Homestead, where, in my opinion, it should have been at for in the first place. But uh, yeah, just like Kyler, 6 out of 10 for both races. Hi. All that cranium still can't tell the difference between a K and a T and somebody's name. Uh, anyways, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really see much of the cup race. Uh, I think I watched a good portion of it, but not – I don't really remember much of it, truthfully. Uh, the Xfinity race, though, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I feel really bad for Justin Allgaier. Uh, it's really sad. Um, he was right there at it, and uh, tire just went kablooey. So there's not much we can really do about that. It was just luck, and it was bad. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Chandler – Chandler Smith getting it done. That's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> bless America. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Here um, we go. Oh, Kyler's camera's frozen. But, uh, yeah, it was a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's just stuck on his fucking smile. Uh, oh it was God. a good race. <laughs> we got cameos. It's a wall. Yeah, no, it was a good We're weekend. just getting started. Uh, the NASCAR Cup Series, uh, the package was, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not driving it, so I can't explain how it feels, but I can tell you that it doesn't, I don't know. It's it's decent, but it, it needs some work still. Um, That's about it. Um. <laughs> I can <laughs> <laughs> oh boy uh try to keep it professional but <laughs> it just can't sing in that all right um <sighs> all right so yeah my takes x race wasn't that bad um you know justin all guy minding his own business then blowing a tire like five seconds later thank you jamie little very cool um I don't know. Yeah, Chandler Smith getting a win for Joe Gibbs. It looked like Joe Gibbs has a whole rebuild they're doing this year, obviously. So to see them uh, get to victory lane with one of the drivers that isn't JHN is uh, definitely big on their end for the Xfinity program. Uh, as for the cup race, I personally think this is one of the... He's gone. Kill him. <laughs> Um, I personally thought this was one of the better Phoenix races that we've had in the next gen. Um, you know, I, I didn't hate it at all. I thought, you know, yeah, passing was difficult, but it was still possible. Um, a lot better than we've seen before, you know, with the championship race, wasn't that bad. This doesn't look that bad. You know, I do agree. Phoenix shouldn't be the finale still. But, you know, if it puts up better racing like this and they start trying to do a little more few th- different things, then I could see it being good enough to maybe keep the championship date. It just it's all in time. Um, but, you know, you have a cool weekend. Joe Gibbs sweeps the weekend. Toyota gets their first win uh, in the Cup Series season. 
Chevy didn't even lead a lap at Phoenix, which is crazy considering they won all the Cup Series races up to this point. So uh, a lot of things going on for Joe Gibbs and Toyota. So maybe they're going to have a whole bunch of momentum going into Bristol this weekend. Um, aside from that, though, we'll hold off on F1 until Kyler gets back since he's like the specialist for that. Um, and as far as IndyCar goes, we had the St. Pete race uh, season opener for them. Fabian. Yeah, uh, St. Pete was right out of the gate pretty strategic. Everyone started to uh, look at their fuel calculator to see how long they could go on on their uh, runs until the next pit stop. But uh, Joseph Newgarden, he uh, he straight up dominated. He led ninety two out of the one hundred laps of that race and stole the show at one. Uh, I did have something else to say, but. Other than that, I can't remember another any other thing from that race. It wasn't bad. There was good racing, but it wouldn't be a top tier IndyCar race in my opinion. So overall, seven seven point five out of ten for me. Ty, you don't you didn't watch IndyCar? He's not an. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, you're not an IndyCar Stingray guy. Stingray Rob. Uh, Stingray Rob. Uh, DNF number one on the season. Um, oh, okay. yeah, you're not, you're not much of an IndyCar guy, huh? You just kind of, I mean, you kind of tune in here and there. We're slowly getting into it, uh, with, with Gavin and everybody talking about it, but still not really. Yeah, I mean, that's understandable that, you know, um, a lot of more, you know, because you're more of a NASCAR guy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's fair. Um, I don't know. As far as my takes on St. Pete, it. Usual St. Pete race. Yeah, Newgarden ran away with it. We almost saw Penske uh, sweep the podium. I personally thought that they could have done it if they let uh, McLaughlin let power through and kind of attack Pato because it seemed like power had more speed towards the end. Uh, Kyler's back, by the way. Um, he is. Yeah, he's joining. But, I mean, it, it was a solid race, you know, for way better than last year's race where it was an utter shit show but it is what it is um since you're back kyler uh yep. takes on saint pete <laughs> um you know like i said i mean i was at work during the indica uh, race as well <laughs> but um indica race i i mean i was watching a little bit while i was at work i enjoyed it um a lot of different strategies in the mid uh midfield and stuff um, it was a shame that what happened to Marcus Erickson with the mechanical failure, he's running in the top 10, I think sixth, high as six or something uh, around there. He was doing pretty good up until that point with, you know, the mechanical failure, which, you know, set him back. <laughs> <laughs> We're not allowed to do anything right on the Hmm. Like a nuclear <laughs> bomb just pop off from the rest <laughs> of the <time. laughs> uh, South uh, or North Carolina has gone bye bye. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Everybody's good. <laughs> Jeez, well, it's gonna be one of these. Yeah, it's gonna be one of these episodes. It's pissing down rain here too. So if you see lights flicker, you know the reason. <laughs> Your power is gonna go out. Mine yeah. was just a cat, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, moving forward, um, Formula One Saudi Arabian uh, Grand Prix. It started at Max One. <laughs> That's a simple way of putting it. I feel like I could add nothing else to that. I don't know about Ty, but Kyler, you you kick things off with that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, Max domination once again. I mean, that's, you know, nothing new. No one's going to stop him, to be honest, honestly. And even, you know, Paris, he's been doing pretty good. He's, you know, finished second, you know, both races so far. So I just think uh, Checo's confidence just as a whole compared to last season is a lot better. And, you know, I think now that, you know, it's a new season, Helmut's not on his ass every other week weekend about, you know, being able to perform and stuff. I mean, his qualifying is not really up there per se with the Red Bull, but you know, his, his race pace is obviously a lot better than what it used to be. <clears throat> but um, uh, what what impressed me the most is um, Oliver Behrman from F two jumping into the car right away and getting points in the Ferrari. I thought that was really impressive, oh, yeah. considering it's at a streak, 
a street track and you know the fastest street track at uh, Jeddah. So that was really impressive. Um, after the race, that <clears throat> he uh he was t speaking to the media and um he was talking about wanting to go longer in the soft stint because you know as the run went on the car you know started to you know be more comfortable to his handling and stuff. But um you know it's his first ever F one race. <clears throat> and you know it certainly won't be his last based on that performance alone right. but um you know i think uh you know considering how many drivers contracts are expiring after this year um i definitely uh could see um oliver bearman you know jump up to f1 if he's able to get a super license because um you have to finish <clears throat> top three in f2 in order to get that super license Anyone else have anything? What do you think? I got anything to add to yeah, that? I, I know you don't. don't. I'm, looking at, I'm looking at Ty, seeing if he's got anything to toss in. I actually missed most of the F1 race. Uh, I only caught the tail end of it. Um, I'm kind of, I was really impressed with Ollie, uh, seeing what he was able to do. Uh, that was kind of cool to see somebody in a really short time um, be able to put in, I think it was P6. Was it P6? P7. P7? P7. Okay. P7. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, that's still, that's for somebody yeah. in their oh, first yeah. F1 race. That's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. and... Well, Another thing that I want to talk about is Stroll. I mean, at this point, he's got to go. Well, yeah. well, I regret to inform you, but uh, have you yeah, seen I your know. team principal or whatever the hell he is? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, he defended him in Qatar last year when he had that meltdown after qualifying. I mean... I, mean, I don't think Aston Martin's going to get any better than what they are right now unless they move on from Lance Stroll. Because, um, you know, you got Felipe Drogovic, Teo Pocher, Oli Behrman, so many other drivers that can jump in that seat and, you know, perform the way they need to. Because, you know, we've seen rookies. I mean, Logan Sargent, of course, last year was all over the place. But, you know, uh, Gwen Yuzo and... <clears throat> you know Oscar Piastri they've performed really good um but you know I think after this season or maybe even the summer break something's got to change with the Aston Martin because um even at the start of the last year um I think after Baku um you know Aston Martin Aston Martin was barely ahead of uh, Mercedes and the constructors at that point in time mainly because of how bad Lance Stroll was doing and this is his seventh year in F1. If it was anyone else making the amount of mistakes he would be making, they would have been gone a long time ago. Oh, yeah. So I just think Aston Martin has got to do something with him, either help him be more confident or something like that. Otherwise, he's got, he's got to go, in my opinion. I know where he can go. See, Aston Martin, they're starting up a team in WEC. Lance Stroll, he can go over there. He has experience in racing, obviously. Go over there to WEC, bring a driver from F2 up into the Asthma F1 seat. Bada bing, bada boom, everyone wins. No, he just needs to go learn McDonald's, truthfully. That too. <laughs> That's what he needs to learn. Uh, um, I feel like there's nothing else to add on to F1. <laughs> there, there's yeah. just nothing. It's, it's kind of just a steaming pile of shit depending on how you look at it mm -hmm. um aside from that we have nascar news as said uh first one or well all of it really has to do with coda first one mbm makes their return to the cup series after about two and a half years uh timmy hill will be driving for the team at coda it was originally set to be matt jaskel but due to sponsorship concerns uh Timmy's back in the car. So your guys' takes on it, Kyler? Um, I mean, it's obviously nice to see Timmy Hill, you know, back in the Cup Series with MBM and stuff. But, I mean, if there's more than, you know, 40 cars per se, because it's not final yet of how many, you know, cars are going to be in the Cup Series race. But um, I don't really see much that MBM is going to do, to be honest, because I'm pretty sure they're bringing an old Mustang, too. Yeah. As well. So... This is, I guess, the start of the zombie Mustang, like it was for the zombie, the zombie Dodge in the Xfinity series with Mike Carmen. So, um, you know, it's always nice to see MBM come back. It's 
kind of weird how it's just out of the blue and just like you know it's just like oh they're back but yeah um <clears throat> depending on how uh coda will go i i mean who knows maybe um because i think coda or well this year they're bringing back the stage cautions if i'm not mistaken I think it's for some tracks, yeah. yeah coda i don't know if that is the case but if it is um i could definitely see um Uh, Timmy Hill doing some strategy to get track position because obviously they're not going to be contending for any stage points and Oh, yeah. stage points are meaningless to them anyways in that matter so um I mean I could maybe see if he if he has a good enough run I could definitely see him run top 25 maybe top 20 um and you know obviously with how the end of it last year went maybe he can squeak into a top 15 who knows we'll just have to see how that goes Fidel? Yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with this deal. I think Timmy Hill, he's in the category of like uh, Carl Long or JJ Yaley, where they have untapped potential in the Cup Series, but since they're at a certain age, they can't really get anything else out of their career. So it's kind of like the best what they got. So it's at least something for Timmy Hill. That's all I can say. I mean, you know, I, I feel like Kyler summed it up right. Same with you, Fidel. Um, this is kind of like the only little bit of cup opportunity he gets. So he's got to make the most of it. So I wouldn't be surprised as, a, you know, Kyler said, maybe he tries some strategy to get to the front. Obviously, they're not racing for stage points. They're just racing for money. They're racing for overall position at the end of the day to see what they can get. So it's going to be interesting to see how, you know, small team tries to handle that. But at the end of the day, you know, it, you you can't really have high expectations for a team that hasn't been there for a couple of years and is running an outdated car. So uh, moving forward to that more Coda news as far as driver lineups for the Cup Series, uh, Colleg Racing announced they will be fielding a third entry, being the 13 for AJ Allmendinger as Shane Van Gisbergen is in the 16. So, I mean... No shocker there, I feel. I don't know about you guys. Do uh, you have anything to really input on AJ coming back? I mean, it, it's not a surprise to me, but, I mean, it is weird that, you know, he's going to be in the 13 instead of the 16 because Yeah. you know, the, the 16 is what he's normally done pretty much ever since that car has been a thing in What the he's Cup racing Series. this weekend, for example. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, It is what I mean, it is. it doesn't surprise me, but, I mean, I think he'll do well. I mean, I know that colleagues sort of on, like, a, the back foot type of thing, is, <clears throat> at least in the Cup Series, because they haven't performed... As well as they had liked to, as far as this season goes. I know the first, you know, couple of races, it wasn't really ideal for them because, you know, Daytona, Atlanta, well, those are super speedway races. Those will be those races and stuff. Um, but, you know, um, I think probably after these next couple of races, Colo's going to, you know, get back to where they uh, used to, um, you know, back in 2022 and 2023 with, you know, running up front, at least in the top 15 and stuff. Where, where they used to run <clears throat> and you know they almost won a race last year with just the halo at the chicago street course which was uh, almost mind-blowing to me at least because you know that entire year they haven't really been in a prime position to you know compete for a win like that Oh, yeah. yeah quite literally exactly what kyler said uh happy for aj almond you're happy for svg uh can't say but good luck to uh calling on a 13 and 16 teams Damn, so you're just going to leave out Daniel Hemrick. Okay, see how it is, man. See how it is. Um, I mean, yeah, I feel like it was something kind of everyone expected. It just, you know, I agree. It's odd how they're putting the numbers. You think SVG would be in the 13 instead, since AJ's kind of built a brand with the 16. Um, and that's his Xfinity number, too. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll swap things around and... just leave it as that i think the only reason they're doing it is because of the charter so they trust aj can qualify in i think they're just kind of like eh, we don't know about svg couldn't qualify into the arco race at daytona so but that's a totally different format doesn't matter so i feel like it's just you know for precaution measures don't blame them uh reference anyways um but yeah it's about what you expect 
to have another road ringer show up for your team. So they've got two cars, um, possibly three if Hemrick kind of figures things out with a cup car at a road course. Um, other news too, Daniel Kevia is back. This is for the Xfinity series, I believe, with SS Greenlight in the 07. Um, been a minute since we've seen him, but mm-hmm. you guys' opinions on it? I mean, I love it. I mean, I think he's doing uh, done pretty well. The last time he was in Xfinity, I think he got a top 15 at the Roval in 2022, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So I definitely could see him do pretty well. Um, you know, I think based on his driving style from, you know, Formula One, it definitely fits, you know, the NASCAR side of things. And, you know, he's obviously a very aggressive driver and, you know, he knows that too. Um, it definitely would... Uh, <clears throat> be cool to see him run well it obviously depends if you know he is he able to make the race and stuff because i don't know how many cars are entered for the xfinity race at coda but um you know if he you know if it comes to the point where he does make the race and stuff like that it definitely will be nice to see him run well if he's able to do so um but you know i i like it i like seeing him back i like you know seeing other drivers from you know, across other motorsports, run Xfinity trucks, cup, whatever the case may be, because yeah. it does help NASCAR's brand uh, expand in that case. Yeah, I like seeing uh, other drivers from different motorsports and in NASCAR you try it out, see how it is. But hopefully this year we get to see more drivers from different motorsports, maybe get some on a rare occasion, maybe Valentino Rossi, he puts his he puts his foot into NASCAR to see how it is. Maybe we get a another driver from uh, VH Supercars. Maybe a current Formula One driver. Maybe Lando Norris says, "Screw it, maybe I'll do a NASCAR race." But uh, I mean, to say, yeah, Daniel uh do another NASCAR start. I mean, I I really don't have input on it. I feel like every opportunity he's gotten and once again it's kind of with the team that you know doesn't have proper funding so it's going to be interesting to see you know can he outperform it is he just going to kind of run around have some fun um obviously if he's back then he wants to be back so that's good to see that he at least has some love for the sport enough to come back after a couple years of being out of it and showing up for another race. So maybe we'll see him do a couple more uh, road courses later on in the season. But, you know, I, I don't expect much out of the team. Uh, as Kyler said, you know, his driving style fits for NASCAR. So, and he had a decent finish at the Charlotte Roval a couple of years ago in the Xfinity series. So he could very possibly, you know, recreate that. It's just a matter of uh, what if scenarios, if they can take advantage of it. Obviously it's a track heaps, barely familiar with so it's just a matter of adapting to the car there um last tidbit of news uh for coda weekend as well uh 2311 announced that their 67 car that's what it usually is is turning into the 50 uh due to mobile one's what is it 50th anniversary yeah uh with kamui kobayashi behind the wheel um luckily matthew stotts isn't here to say something foul about that um (laughs) asking random questions that yeah anyways uh takes takes on kamui's return yeah it's nice to see him back you know just like uh denica via as well um i think he'll do pretty good you know um the 23xi program has been doing pretty well in the road courses recently um whether it be the Roval or, you know, Watkins Glen or whatever the case may be. Um, <clears throat> I do like the Mobile One uh, branding idea where they changed the number to the 50 because, you know, we've seen that in the past, you know, especially back in the 90s and 2000s with um, pretty much the, the, rec- the most recent one I can remember is Kyle Busch changing his number to the 75 for the All-Star Race for, I think, uh, Joe Gibbs Racing's 75th anniversary or something like that. <clears throat> or Eminem's seventy. Yeah, I think it was it's Eminem's. Mm-hmm. But um, and then Jimmy Johnson back in twenty eleven, where it was five five percent sales on Lowe's. Um, so you know, brand uh, brand ideas like that, I definitely do like. And you know, I like the paint scheme that he has. The gold Pegasus on the side looks really good. 
Um, but 23AXI also announced that they were doing two more races with two different drivers as well in that same car. So um, I could definitely see the other um, Toyota Gazoo drivers, you know, jump in that uh, seat as well. Mike Conway comes to mind. <laughs> Same as uh, Sebastian Buemi, who also raced in Formula One in the past as well with Toro Rosso. Um, so I could definitely see that. I think the races that they're going to do is probably going to be maybe Sonoma and Watkins Glen. I don't think they're going to do the Robo, but if they do, I mean, who knows? But it'll definitely uh, be interesting to see who they go with. I mean, um, <clears throat> because uh, I don't think Jensen Button's going to do a race with them because I think he's more, you know, with pretty much Stuart Haas and Rick Ware racing at that yeah. point. Um, so, um, but it'll be interesting to see who they choose for those two races for the most part. Yeah. It's nice to see Kobayashi come back for another start in NASCAR. Uh, see, we saw him at Indianapolis last year. He did decently well. He kind of got bullied a bit by some of the other drivers during that race, but uh, it was nice at least see him try. Uh, obviously, the Japanese media, they were really a, really invested in his start in NASCAR, even though he wasn't doing so well to compared to his standards in maybe WEC or Super Formula. But uh, it's, I'm excited to see him on how he will do in the 50 car. Um, well, I find it funny you say that yet the other day you were talking about how he's a WEC merchant. So, you know, uh, hypocrisy speaks, I guess. <laughs> um, I mean, we saw him at Indy. He struggled, obviously. He seemed to figure it out at times, struggled again. I, I mean, that was just a learning curve. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how he does now that he's got a race under his belt, more experience. Um, a track that he's fairly familiar with. At least it will come in handy uh, when WEC goes to Coda later this year. So, you know, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, good team, uh, good environment. It's just a matter of can he figure it out himself. So I'm I'm interested to see what that program delivers for Coda. But, you know, it's it's hard to predict on a guy that struggled his first race and you know obviously he's coming back for a second try so kudos to him on that um aside from that i believe all we have left is predictions for this weekend's races at bristol truck series cup series across the board you know the drill kyler um honestly truck series i'm gonna go with the pace car because you know beautiful <laughs> take yeah, because, I mean, I'm expecting it to be one of the worst races ever, to be honest, because it's the truck series. We know how bad the races have been recently, and it's, especially at the short tracks, it just turns into cautions after cautions after cautions, and it's not the best racing, but, you know, all jokes aside and stuff, uh, I'm going to go with Ben Rhodes. I think he can do it. Um, you know, the Thor Sport um, team, seems pretty well with their short track package and stuff, whether it be Ty Majeski or Ben Rhodes. <clears throat> but um, yeah, for Cup, on the other hand, I'm going to go with Martin Truex Jr. He's been a little bit quiet this year, but I think uh, he can, you know, sneak out a win at Bristol. And I mean, I've been, well, as far as, you know, these past two weeks, I've been two for two <laughs> Cup predictions. Yeah. So who knows? Um, but I think, I think Truex uh, can be can do pretty well at Bristol. Um, either him or Chris Buescher, to be honest. But I'm gonna go with Truex for the pick for Cup Series. Yeah, we saw Toyota's momentum at Phoenix. I think they bring that same kind of momentum here at Bristol for trucks. Seeing at the average laps for practice earlier today, I'm gonna think Corey Heim wins at Bristol, and that same number, but only in the Cup Series. He won the clash early uh, this year, and I think Denny Hamlin will win at Bristol. Um, I don't know. I just got blinded. Anyways, <laughs> um, my predictions. Uh, I'm gonna have to say, 
I, it's hard to bet against Kyle Busch when it comes to Bristol, especially a truck series race. So I think he's got, you know, the winning truck obviously came short at Vegas. Um, seeing as all the Spire trucks qualified top 10 minus Purdy, who's 11th, but either way, um, they've obviously got a lot of fast trucks. So Kyle, I could see just leading the way. Um, those guys got to learn off him a little more. So it's going to be interesting. As Kyler said, I see it being a shit show though. So uh, with the cup series race though, betting on Toyota, betting on a guy who was quick in the clash came up short, betting on a guy that came up short of Bristol last year and also came up short last week. I think Ty Gibbs finally gets it done. He's got speed at these short tracks. He's obviously got speed in general. It's only a matter of time. And I think there's no better time than this weekend, especially tomorrow to get that first win locked up. Um, aside from that, however, I think that wraps everything up from a uh, shorter episode for once, but, also chaotic at the beginning for the wrong reasons. Um, well, you guys have anything else to toss in before we go? No, I got no, not that I know of. All right. Well, with that being said, thank you all for tuning in to this week's episode of the Burning Rubber podcast. We'll see you guys next week. Don't get freaked out next time. Kyler's camera freezes. We'll see you then. Goodbye. <laughs>